Good afternoon. Welcome to Vet Sentry 7. Today I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on how to fill out an electronic certificate of veterinary inspection, often referred to as a health certificate. I'm going to log on using my credentials. And once logged on, I'm going to come to the main site where you'll fill out CVIs. You notice at the top, in red is highlighted a statement that says I have incomplete CVIs. These are CVIs that have not been sent to the states. They're incomplete and they're in my hold queue at the bottom. And you can see here's all my CVIs I've created. And at the very bottom there's two red ones here that are incomplete. The first step you'll do to complete a CVI is click this button right here, enter a CVI manually. Let's go and do that right now. You'll notice the CVI opens up in my browser using Adobe Acrobat Reader. Now I'm using Mozilla Firefox. I find that to be one of the best browsers on the market today. And in that I go to Tools, Options. This is very important. I go down to PDF, Portable Document File, and I tell the Firefox program use Adobe Acrobat in Firefox. Otherwise, it uses its default PDF viewer that doesn't have near the power that Adobe does. Once I've made that setting, then as I open up uh, CVIs, it'll open up within my browser here. Now we'll start here by clicking in this first box, paper CVI number. This is if I want to cross-reference a CVI that I've completed in paper. I'm going to put in the inspection date here, and then I'm going to go over and put in the issue date. Now I'm going to hit 2 on my keypad to get me to the 20s and then arrow down to get to today's date which is the 26. And I'm just tabbing over from box to box. Now if you had an entry permit number you put that in there, the brand number, brand date, so on and so forth. Now I'm over here on the left side under origin of shipment. Here I'm going to put in the uh, origin name, uh, John Smith and the phone number. You see I put it in and it segments it for it. I can put in the address and I can put in the premise number if I have it. I want to show you real quick a couple things. Uh, one is if I try to submit this EVI by clicking continue, uh, highlighted fields must be filled box shows up. The date down here has to be filled in. The inspection date, the issue date, the origin, uh, name, street, physical address, city and zip uh, have to be filled in, as well as these destination address and names have to be filled in. Those are the only required fields. Now you'll notice the state says test in here. When you log in, it'll be defaulted to the state of your origin, and we know that by your login credentials. Now I'll go to the destination and put in where this is going. Put in a name there, and we'll put in an address. Uh, if you have a premise ID, you can put that in. If you don't, that's fine. Now here we're going to put in the state where these animals are going to. We're going to say these are going to South Dakota, and we'll populate that with the abbreviation there. Now I'm over in the transporter uh, of the animals. Sometimes uh, we see a lot of them that just say same. You could put that or you could put the, the trucking company if you have it. Their phone number, their address. A lot of times that's left blank. Now we're down here to the present owner of the shipment. So here's the origin, here's the present owner. Most of the time it's the same. And you can just click the same as above, it'll populate it. Same with the destination of the shipment and the new owner of the shipment. Again, you can just click that button and it'll be the same. It'll just copy it down. If it is different, you can certainly make that adjustment there and, and make the change. Uh, here we have the longitude and latitude. Most people probably don't have that, but nowadays that's becoming easier to come by with smartphones. Put in the flock number, test record numbers, whether they're available, yes or no. 
down here in the middle we can put in whether they're beef cattle, dairy cattle, swine, sheep, uh, other for dogs and cats, uh, poultry over here. I'm just going to say beef cattle and I'm going to say we have four on this shipment and that they're moving for sale via interstate, via truck. They're all TB free, Yoni's free, brucellosis free, um, that kind of thing. Down here in the middle we can put in a uh, veterinary certification statement and then we'll move down to the meat of the form right down here now in, into the animal. Now a couple things you should be aware of. We could put in a group lot number here so if we had 20 you know two year old steers something like that we could we could put a group lot in um, whatever that group lot might be. We can also put in the animal identification number and we allow three unique IDs per animal and what you see is I'm putting a comma behind them followed by a space and then the ID number. So three unique IDs per animal if, if you uh, have them and want to put them in. Uh, we can also put in a name of an animal if it was a horse uh, or any other information if it was a batch of semen, a lot number, that kind of thing. Whatever you need to do to identify that animal. Now I'm going to just for argument's sake here just make them all uh, a number. Okay, so now uh, I put in my four animals here. You notice I put those in first. Make them different. Um, most animals on a CBI are all the same, so I'm going to say these are all two years old. I'm going to say they're all uh, Angus, they're female, and you notice how it populates everything down um, into the form for me. Um, we did that by design to make it easier uh, because most of the time all this information is the same. If it's not, you certainly can go back and change any of it. Now if this particular one here was not a two-year-old, if it was a four-year-old, I can still change it uh, to whatever I need. Okay, now we have that filled in. If we fill in all eight lines and click continue, it's going to ask us if we want a page two. And we can have as many pages of a CBI as you need. Now in this case, I'm just doing four. Um, so I'm just going to go over here to this last column and tab, hit October for the date. That. Now I'm down to the signature date and you notice down here this all been populated based on my username and password with my veterinary information. I'll have my USDA accreditation number, my address, my email address, my phone number, all of my particulars here. I'm going to put in October again and there we go. Now the form is pretty much complete. I can back out and take a, a look at the whole form, make sure it's just what I want, make any changes. Once I am happy with the form, I can click continue. It asks me if I want to submit the form. It also asks me if I want to save this as a template. So I could save this as a template and it'll be in my template list, which I'll show you in the next video. And then I could bring this up and reuse this form and not have to re-enter all this data the next time. So I'll show you that next time. I'm just going to submit this form. When I do, it's automatically going to populate the database with all this data, and it's going to automatically send this completed form to the uh, origin state, to the destination state, in this case South Dakota, and then it's also going to send one to me, the veterinarian, and that will complete the process. So I'm going to click yes. It's completed the process now. It assigned it a number, and then you're going to see that it's going to come into my email automatically, so I don't have to do anything. And here it came, right here. So I got an email that said, you just completed a CVI. And again, it, it came to me, and it went to the destination state and the origin state. So you don't have to mail anything out. It's all been taken care of for you. It's very easy. 
it shows it to me here that your new certificate was just generated. Yours will have your two-digit state number, followed by your six-digit USDA accreditation number, followed by a six-digit CVI number, followed by dash zero. And dash zero tells you it's the first version of that CVI because we allow you to, to revise a completed CVI and if you revise it that'll just increment to dash one, dash two, and so forth. So that's a real quick uh, demonstration on how to fill out an electronic CBI. In the next demonstration, we'll show you how to do a CBI from template. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us and we'll be happy to help you. Thank you.